Jesus said, fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that giveth, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. We have been instructed by the Lord Jesus himself to take communion at every opportunity. We have been commanded to come to the Lord's table to remember him. It says, do this in remembrance of me. In 1 Corinthians, Paul said, this is what Paul said, that Jesus said, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do the, This do ye often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth or proclaim the Lord's death till he come. In communion, we remember the resurrection. Jesus is alive. And we remember the sacrifice that he made so that we might have a great salvation. The emblems are a reminder of how he suffered and died, but also that he rose again. We must also remember at this time that he will come again and to take us to our new home. Divine appointments. In Hebrews 9.27, it says, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. There are two appointments that all men are going to keep. We're going to die, and we're all going to face the judgment. Life in this world is about getting prepared for those appointments. Jesus came into this world to prepare men in the work of salvation and to keep these appointments so that it will be a blessing instead of a cursing. And if we do not neglect this great salvation. Amen. All of us had to make appointments. And sometimes we miss those appointments or we cancel appointments. But there is one appointment we do not want to miss or should not cancel. This is the one appointment we do not want to miss. Our divine appointment at the Lord's day at the Lord's table at each and every opportunity that we have. Jesus invited us to be here at his ta table in remembrance of him. This is here, we, here where we can have fellowship with him and he can give us understanding and he speaks to us. This is where we can receive instruction in the things of God and enjoy the comfort of the Lord with our brethren. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was, any, was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Jesus said, I am the beginning and the ending, the author and the finisher of our faith. In Hebrews 12, 2, we read that, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, this was Jesus' divine appointment, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
This is the one who has the eyes of flaming fire, the one with the two-edged sword, the voice of many waters. He holds the seven spirits and the seven stars. Jesus said this about himself. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. When we come to this table, we can receive more light and more life in him. In Hebrews 2, 9, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things, and by whom all things are made, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. He is our captain. This is who Jesus is. But he's more than our captain. He is our Lord, our deliverer. He is the prince of life. He is the good shepherd. Paul continues to say, he is the apostle and high priest of our profession, and we are to consider him. And this is what we're going going to do as we come to his table. He was given to be the head of over all things to the church, which is his body. Jesus also said this, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. We are his sheep because he bought us at a great price by his blood. He created us, and in Christ he called us and recreated us. And it is true, he bought us at a great price to be his very own sons and daughters to work in his vineyard. He said, do not be afraid. Come unto me, all ye who that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. At this table, we can find a moment of rest from all of our labors and be at peace with our burdens. And when we leave these bodies, we will have eternal peace and eternal rest with him. At his table, we can be at rest and enjoy free, free, sweet fellowship with our Lord and our Savior. And that's what we want to do right now. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege, the privilege of sitting at your table. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you invited us and you want to instruct us and give us a better understanding of who you are and what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for this kindness. May we remember you and the sacrifice that you made so that we can be your children. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.